The fate of the Neanderthals is a topic which has generated intense discussion and research since the first finds of Neanderthal fossils in the 19th century. Being our closest prehistoric relatives, it is important to try to gain an understanding of the Neanderthals and the reasons for their extinction, as well as doing so to form a historically accurate recount. Exploring the Neanderthals gives an insight into the history and existence of our own species of human, Homo sapiens, and helps explore the question of why we thrived when a species so similar to us did not. Not a single factor, but a combination of factors is attributed to the demise of the Neanderthals, namely climate change, environmental change, and a shortage of food which led to cannibalism. Such factors as these would have adverse effects on any species with a population as small as 15,000, despite the capabilities they may possess. Although commonly stereotyped as brutish cavemen in today's popular culture, detailed scientific research has revealed that Neanderthals had many, many similarities to modern humans and during their coexistence interbreeding was not uncommon. In order to examine what happened to the Neanderthals, we must first confirm what we do know about them. Before becoming extinct approximately 30,000 years ago, our closest human relatives occupied Europe and western parts of Asia for over 200,000 years. Although recognisably human, the Neanderthals differed slightly in physicality to Homo sapiens. Some of these differences were evolutionary adaptions which helped them to survive in the cold and dry environments that they often lived through. For example, their bodies were more robust and muscular than that of Homo sapiens, which aided them in consolidating heat. Although there is disagreement between scientists, their wide noses are thought to have helped humidify and warm cold air, another evolutionary adaption which may have helped them live through glacial cycles. Though helping them to survive in cold climates, these adaptions would have been a hindrance during periods of warm temperature and would have contributed to a decrease in the survival rate of the Neanderthals. Other physical differences which would not have been adaptions to the environment included prominent brow ridges and a brain size larger than that of Homo sapiens. Ed Green, the head of biomathematics in a genome project in Leipzig states, human and chimpanzee sequences are 98.7% the same and Neanderthals are much closer to us than chimps. So the reality is that for most of the sequence, there's no difference between Neanderthals and modern humans. It is true that these close relatives of ours whose population would not have exceeded more than 15,000 at any time, had many things in common with us. Despite the several physical differences, their posture and movement would have been very similar, if not the same as ours. A recent extraction of DNA from Neanderthal bones showed that they possessed a version of the gene FOXP2, a gene also possessed by Homo sapiens and which is connected to speech and language ability not only in the brain but also on the nerves which control the facial muscles. It is unlikely that their language would have been as sophisticated as ours. However, it is evident from this gene and from fossils of the hyoid bone, a bone connecting the tongue and larynx which aids in speech, that there would have been some form of language amongst these ancient humans, despite how limited it may have been. Neanderthals lived in groups, used fire for warmth, cooking and protection, and hunted in a similar fashion to Homo sapiens. All of these similarities exhibit that these relatives shed many of our capabilities and weren't killed off because of an inability to adapt. The biggest complication that the species faced was that their population was very small and consequently any disease, famine or extreme climate change could wipe them out almost instantaneously. Data extracted by scientists shows that during the period of about 65,000 to 25,000 years ago, there were rapid, severe and abrupt climate changes which had significant impacts on the environment. Despite being physically adapted to the cold, these climate changes would have had a major impact on the lifestyle and survival of the Neanderthals, as the frequency of these changes would not provide much time for the population to recover. Although these environmental changes would have also affected Homo sapiens, the Neanderthals would have suffered more due to their population size, major climatic changes having the potential to wipe out a large proportion of them, 
leaving them in danger of extinction. Cannibalism would also have been a contributing factor to the decline in population of Neanderthals. As a consequence of the climatic and environmental changes occurring around them, the Neanderthals would have been faced with the food shortage. This famine led to cannibalism, and the proof of this can be found by fossil evidence discovered in a cave in El Cidron, Spain. In this limestone cave, researchers discovered the remains of a group whose fossils proved several of these individuals were cannibalized by others in the group. This theory is confirmed by fractures and cut marks that these victims had on their bones and which could only have been left by stone tools. For a species and family to resort to cannibalism, there must have been an ongoing food shortage, indicating that the times were desperate and groups were forced to turn on each other in order to survive. Further proof of the Neanderthals struggling with their declining population size can be seen by evidence of crossbreeding with Homo sapiens. In January 1999, a largely complete skeleton of a four-year-old child was discovered in the Lepido Valley in central Portugal. Researchers Eric Trinkus of Washington University and Cidalia Duarte of Portuguese Institute of Archaeology in Lisbon say that the specimen known as Lago Velo 1 has a mixture of Neanderthal and Homo sapien traits which could only have occurred from extensive interbreeding between the two species. The specimen's remains are recognisably human Despite the short lower limb bones and the backward sloping mandible, these two traits attributed to Neanderthals. The child was buried 24,500 years ago, a time when there is no proof of Neanderthals still existing. In order for Neanderthal features to have persisted for several thousand of years after they became extinct, coexisting populations of the two species would have had to have mixed significantly according to Trinkus and Duarte. This theory of crossbreeding is not unlikely because Lager Velo 1 is not the only skeleton that has been found with the crossover of traits. The evidence of crossbreeding is significant because it gives a clear indication of how scarce the population of Neanderthals was at this time. If both species had stable populations, it would be highly unlikely that they would have bred with each other. Had the Homo sapien population been as unstable as the population of the Neanderthals, it would have been unlikely for them to have survived much longer than the Neanderthals, given that they possessed many of the same capabilities. This suggests that the Neanderthals were conscious of their scarce population, and being faced with difficulty in finding breeding partners of their own species resulted in them finding partners from another species. These facts and their supporting evidence all point to the conclusion that due to their small population, the Neanderthals had difficulty surviving and eventually became extinct. The cause for their extinction cannot be pinned down to a single reason such as climate change, environmental change, a shortage of food or cannibalism. Although these events all occurred and took a toll on the population of the Neanderthals, one of these factors alone cannot be held responsible for wiping out the entire population. The species had many of the same capabilities as Homo sapiens, and despite the misconception of being brutish cavemen, fossil evidence of crossbreeding between the two species indicates how similar the two really were. Unfortunately, the population size of our prehistoric relatives struggled when faced with environmental changes and food shortages not giving enough time for the population to recover and eventually leading to the demise of the Neanderthals.